James Gunn used the same people in his movies. Anyway, the fictional town of Weasley, this meteor arrives on Earth. As soon as the movie starts out, you know that something is on that meteor. Um, but no, so anyway, when it pops down, seemingly very quiet. Then we get a close-up of this weird shaky camera stuff, revealing that it's an egg that hatches. Different renditions of William H. Macy are all around the town. There's a super pretty teacher who was also in Brightburn. There goes Yondu, who's her husband. And yes, he will be the main character. I never know what this actor's name is, but I always call him Thick Legs. Cause like, his face reminds me of a leg and his legs always look super thick. I don't know why, it's a compliment. Yondu has a big house and they all live a super comfortable life. He's actually kind of handsome. He's got one of those um old country road type of faces. Like, if you ever need a human representation of Dusty Down South, like American blood, that's it. I mean, I don't know, for all you know, this freaking guy could be Polish, but he just looks like blue-blooded American to me. I'm sorry, it's bothering me, I gotta look it up. Yep, that's him. Oh. <laughs> yeah, boy. Chat chicken. I called that shit, I called it. Oh my God, that's, I feel so proud of myself. I don't know why. <laughs> Man's more American than the president. Anyway, his wife, it's known around town, is only with him because of the money. She had a bad upbringing and she saw this guy who had a lot of money in a big old Cadillac and she's like, you know what? I'm gonna suck my way out of here. She was young at the time, one year away from being an adult, so that's totally appropriate. Then he tries to do the married thing and then she gives him the, I'm not in the mood spiel, which seems to be something she does all the time because based on what both of them said, it's been a very long time. Understand? He's very frustrated and he has way more patience than I would have. Come on. No, come on, baby. Why don't you just you know, work one out for yourself, darling? Wow. Like, I'm just saying, like, maybe it's just me, but if you're not in the mood to do the shooky shook thing, you know, I get it. Sort of. Not really. But let's just say something's going on down there. You can't use your hand? Like, this man is paying all the bills in the house. So, never mind. Whatever. But, Altiori, that doesn't mean that he oh, it's my body and he should respect when I tell him no. That's fair, that's fair. So when you ask him for money and he doesn't feel like giving you money, you should respect his decision. I don't know why I just went there. I don't know, it's just something that gets to me. He takes up his clothes and says he's going out for a walk. I know all there is to know about the crying. <laughs> Sorry. No, I watched that the first time and, and it caught me off guard. I don't know why it was, I think it's, I think it's the eyes and the way she's gripping the mic. Your thoughts create your reality that you oh, dread. Excuse me. Ah! Understandably, Grant is very sad and feels dejected and rejected. This whole area just looks very sad in general. And then the little Miss Slurpy Slut comes up to him, basically throwing herself at him with her little fish eyes. Remember me? <laughs> Brenda, I always had a crush on you, but I like know you're married, but you know, whatever. He's obviously had a lot to drink and she pulls him out to the woods to show him where she marked their initials. Oh my God, <laughs> Slurpy Slurp. And honestly, at this point in time, I kind of understand like, you know, if something happens, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> she tries throwing herself at him and he's like, whoa, wait a second. Uh, Starla, my wife, remember her? Yeah, I can't. He's about to leave her there in the woods by herself and get back home to his wife. What a good guy. But Altior, he shouldn't have been out there in the woods in the first place. Note to self, if you quench your significant other's needs, they won't be so thirsty that they have to look elsewhere to fulfill them, unless they're a glob of pigeon filth. But before he can leave, he sees something in the dirt. No one's thinking it's aliens. They follow the slime trail and find this big slug thing and he pokes it with a stick. His little slit opens up and out comes this thing. Yo, I don't care if it's an alien or not. I see some shit like that. I'm not staying, uh, no. Especially since it does that when I get close to it. Dude, we have freaking things on earth right now that will shoot spines into your freaking heart. We have things right now that exist that will leave a whole part of their ass inside of you wriggling its way inside your body while they die. We have animals that helicopter their poo at you, throw their poo at you. Baby animals that defensive vomit and lizards that spew pungent acid-like blood from their eyes. We don't have to look very far to see some fricked up shit on our planet. And then you see something like this that you've never seen before and you're like, wow, this is weird barb needle sticking out of it from out of its dorsal cloaca. And I'm just gonna sit there and stare at it. 
with my eye in range. Not smart. So of course he does not take the warning and it goes straight inside of his stomach. Gross. I like how James Gunn decided to use one of those programs from like freaking Discovery or one of those channels that used to host A Thousand Ways to Die so they can show you how the alien travels through his body and what it does. Yep. Now you got some alien brand logo stuck inside your freaking brain because you didn't use your brain to get out of there when you should have. He gets up and he's clearly not okay. He is so hungry, but he's only hungry for one thing, meat. After his wife wakes up, she realizes that he hadn't been home the whole night and he had just come home recently. So now she's all worried because she's like, oh boy, if he's cheating on me, that means it's possible another girl may get this nice expensive house and comfortable living. Because God forbid, you know, I go out there and make something of myself. She is a teacher, just saying. She had the choice to go and do something else, but she chose to stay with him. But she does try to make things right. Oh my god. <laughs> he hears this music and there is this human being. Remember, this alien has the memories of this person, so it's still Grant, but he's being influenced by the alien. But the alien's also seeing things through his eyes. I don't mean to push you away. Make you feel rejected. That's code word for, um, I don't want you going out there and finding any of the pissy, because, you know, I just remembered that I need you to pay these bills. And for the first time in such a long while, he gets some from his wife, and it took all of him just going out and, you know, it's just kind of messed up, because the alien took half of those sensations he would have had anyway. He keeps ordering a bunch of meat, then he starts acting strange. But even though the alien wants him to go after his wife, something inside of him fights the alien. He kept on fighting it. We can kill everybody else and everything else, just not her, not Starla. Party, the guy who's gonna become the sheriff, he's always liked Starla. I think she likes him too, but she's trying to stay faithful. And he doesn't want to do anything that would make her uncomfortable, but if she gave him the go-ahead, he would drop his pants and say how deep. So instead of Starla, he goes over to Brenda's house, and he shows her the grand surprise. He puts these tentacle, fingernail-looking things inside of her and starts pumping her full of stuff. I'm guessing he's the male of the species because whatever he's, uh, pumping out the stuff, ew, always looks like he's enjoying it very, very much. Oh my. Oh, it's an alien, but it's kind of hot. I don't know why she's having a seizure while that's happening, but that's what's happening. After he comes home from implanting himself inside the brood human, Starla realizes that, yeah, something's wrong with you, dude. Like, you're not, you don't look too good. He tries to say it's a bee sting, and it's, it's not, it's not a big deal. She calls the doctor, since he claimed that he saw the doctor. Doctor says he hasn't seen that guy in over a year. Everything starts unraveling. Turns out this guy has been keeping Brenda in here, and she's getting fatter and fatter. Whoever he infects with these wormy tentacle things always gets hungrier and hungrier. When the cops show up, they let her know that people saw her husband going into Brenda's house, and there was a sign of a struggle, and now Brenda is missing. Grant, her husband, had left a lock on the door claiming that he had a surprise for her. But after this, she's done with surprises. She breaks off the lock with a bat, and what she finds downstairs is honestly very disturbing. First of all, it smells really bad. And I had to look up on the site, does the dog die? Because, um... Yeah, a lot of things, a lot of things, uh, just, I can't show it. Thank goodness, none of the gory animals look real, so, and I knew ahead of time, so I could mentally prepare for this. She tries to call the cops, and her husband hears the call and realizes she's betraying him. He attacks her, and tries to put the wormy things in her, but it almost seems like he's fighting the alien. She had called the cops, and tried to call the extension of Party, the sheriff guy that likes her. The cops do arrive, but when they see what's going on, they're like, what the f- most of the movie is just the hunting game of cat and mouse. We got a whole bunch of these little wormy things that explode, and they came out of Brenda. You see, she... <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I lost my voice there for a second. How does your skin stretch so freaking fat? The human skin is really interesting. Like, it's like freaking Play-Doh or ceramic wrap. I don't know which one. It just doesn't even make sense. How is she still alive? Like, but like a giant tick having eaten so much bloody animals, she just kept eating and eating, which doesn't make sense, because if her stomach exploded by this time, she would have been dead with all the internal bleeding. It's alien and magic science. Who knows? All the missing animals, he was feeding her. Because apparently when he put his stuff inside of her, she was growing their children. Then she starts ripping apart. Ew. You know, I will give this movie that. I have never seen something like this before ever. So a whole bunch of these worms come out and start trying to get in other people's mouths. I tried to get in my mouth. What kind of thing wants you to eat? Nobody in the town is safe. But when this one girl sees this thing coming towards her and it tries to fly in her mouth, all of a sudden, she sees the future or the past. And I like the way they did this. <laughs> The 
prophecy is true. And you can see everything from the point of view of this alien. And as we slow it down, we can see that there is, I don't know where this is, but this weird alien planet with these big rodent-like creatures that used to be on it. And he would just eat a whole bunch of them and rip them open. <laughs> then they would start eating each other. Then they would form a huge blob of whatever they were. And they were in pain and suffering. She fights and she gets the alien out of her mouth. Looks like she's playing the flute. The people who got the worms inside them are still alive, but when they wake up, they're very hungry. And Grant apparently can speak through them. He's like an upside down Dracula. The girl who saw the past says that the real alien, his face looks like a needle. He goes from different places, just obliterating all life on the planet. The alien is obviously very intelligent. He had fallen in love with Starla. Starla tries to use this to her advantage as he sees what her husband has become. She did say for better or for worse, she knows she has to kill him. Because not only is he infecting these people, but he's also absorbing all of them into himself. Gross. I kind of feel really bad for him here because you could see if the alien has feelings, but him and the husband are now one and the same. And as she's telling him all these things he wants to hear, he's actually listening and crying. She says, I know you've been alone for billions and billions of years and you're lonely. That's why you like being called Grant because you have his memories and you feel what he feels and it feels good. Just like in Brightburn, she gets ready to betray the person that she loves the most by making them think that she loves them. Honestly, he could have killed her right here, but he just beat her up a little bit. The fuck is that? Okay, are those hands? Hardy kind of sacrifices himself, but he doesn't get the two tentacles inside of them. Apparently the two of them have to be in there for the wormy stuff to work. Maybe one is the stuff and the other one's the fertilizer and the both of them have to be together. He just needs humans to carry it. So technically he doesn't really need them per se. He can fertilize his own offspring. They somehow blow him up because in every single one of these monster movies is the only way they get rid of the monster, blowing it up. There's like never any inventive ways to kill it. Just blow it up. Just set it on fire. Blow it up. That's it. Every single one of these monster movies ends in explosions, I swear to you. So one needs to make a compilation of every single one. And don't even mention the low budget ones. Then that's the end of the movie. All the people are dead. It's, you know, James Gunn's favorite songs plays in the credits and that's it. It was actually a decent movie. That's obviously a mask. And I honestly can't believe that I have not seen it till now. I do want to know more about this alien. But man, Yondu's a great actor. Just this part right here, which is so beautiful. The way he looks at her, like he's seeing her for the first time. And she's like, oh my god, you're crying because you've seen me. <gasps> I want to give myself to you over and over again. Unless you stop paying the bills. I'm surprised she wasn't all like, what did you do? You went out, you came back, and now you're crying with that guilty face. But she knows better. But it's also cute because it does seem like she actually does care about him. So I thought that scene was really beautiful between the both of them until it, you know, got really bad really quick afterwards. Like seriously, this film just escalated. Anyway, we'll take a look at that alien in some other later videos. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.